So you are a millennial or Gen Z, or you were born even later, and you saw the writing on the wall. You saw that the system that we have is fundamentally broken. You lived through the 2008 depression and everything that came after that. And you see that there's no way that you're going to get into a company at 16, work until you're 40 and retire, or even 50 or even 60. Chances are you aren't going to retire anyways, ever. And the fire movement was very compelling in the beginning. We saw the fire movement as a way to game the system in our favor, to get financial independence and retire early. But there are a few things that are fundamentally wrong with the fire movement. And this is why I decided to ditch the fire movement. I fired the fire movement. So the first thing, what is financial independence after all? A thing that I saw a lot in the FIRE movement was people trying to work their asses off during their 20s and even 30s in a rich country, especially the US, so that they could retire in a cheaper country. So they could get some arbitrage between what they had and what they spent. And although that's a good plan in terms of that it can work depending on your circumstances, you also end up using your prime years, the best years of your life in theory. And for what, after all? Just to burn out, just to be 27 and have a heart attack because you're working free jobs that you hate and you never give yourself a pat on the back. You never let yourself spend anything over your teeny tiny budget that you made for yourself so that you could get the joy of retiring early. But the most fundamentally wrong thing is that you don't want to retire. How many people do you know that are 65, they are 70, and suddenly they retire and a few months later, they go crazy. They don't know what to do with their lives. They lack meaning. Some people even die a few months after they retire because they lose their purpose. And of course, I'm not talking about people that are grueling, people that are working their asses off in literally backbreaking jobs. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that have some sort of purpose in their jobs and they actually like their jobs and ended up I mean, even people who don't like their jobs, many times they end up when they finally put on the pajamas and they start watching TV all day and they notice that that's not a fulfilling life at all, especially when you're used to going out of your house every day and talking to people and doing things, even if it's not the best of jobs. So these two mistakes, you don't want to burn out young. And many people who did go through the fire movement, even the people who were successful at it. So mainly people that worked in very lucrative jobs, like in finance and wall street, or maybe they were high profile lawyers or engineers or whatever it is. Even those people who actually got to go through the fire movement, and they are 30, they are 35, and they do have a couple million in the bank or even less. They discover that what they wanted after a while wasn't really to be retired. What you really want is purpose in your life. And what you really want is to have some fuck you money. Because fuck you money is the thing. Is being able to work at a job or to have your own small business, but being able to have options, that optionality is the main driver. That's what will make you more fulfilled and happier because you will be able to make choices. You won't need to have clients that you hate just because you need to pay the bills or have a job that you hate because you can't afford to be six months looking for another opportunity. No, what you need 
is to have that pile of cash so that you can be safe. That's what you need. That's what we call fuck your money. And the funny thing about fuck your money is that it's a very it's a very psychological state actually. It's much more psychological than it is a certain number that you have to reach because we will always think of a number and if you think of 1 million and when you get there you will think of 2 and then 5 and then 10, the number will always grow and grow and grow. So it's actually more of a psychological state than a practical number that you need to reach before you before you can say i will do whatever i want or whatever i need but of course you need to have a pile of cash that will last you for at least a few months before you can start having this optionality or better you could have this in your mind before but if you don't have that pile of cash, maybe you'll have to put your money where your mouth is. And if you start doing things that maybe you shouldn't be doing and you lose your job, then you don't have any money to pay your rent or anything. That might not be the best of ideas. But anyways, what you really want is to have a purpose that gets you out of the bed every morning something that's greater than you, something that's not only about you, it's about helping other people, it's about some kind of craft that you like to do, your art, your creation, your kids, whatever it is for you, you need to have a purpose that goes beyond yourself. It might be writing, it might be reading, it might be music, it might be anything. But you have to have this deeper purpose, this sense of, why? Why do I wake up every day? And I had this in my personal life. When I started working with real estate, actually what I wanted to do was to get a quick buck and be able to have the pile of cash and to stash it and to go, go do the things that I actually wanted to do. Like when I first started, I was thinking of, doing a master's in Europe, for example. And then I wanted to be able to support myself throughout this so that I wouldn't have to work while I studied. And, and eventually I, I ended up even changing my mind through the through time. And I don't really even think about that possibility anymore. But when I began, that was the thing, that was the goal. And eventually I discovered that what I really wanted was to be able to have those choices, to make those choices, to have those options more than anything. So that was the thing that I really wanted. It's not that I wanted to have X amount of money. It's that I wanted to be able to support myself for a period of time without having to worry about getting more money or about not having money. So that was what was on my mind. But then you go back and you see that what you really want is to have a purpose and you really want to have this mindset that you are able to create wealth, to create value whenever you need it. And that value will come to you because you will be constantly creating value and that you are valuable. So you will be able to create. So you see, going back, I thought that either I wasn't valuable or that I wouldn't be able to create that value. So it was more of a limited mindset towards money than it was about actually needing the money in the first place. So by going through this journey and afterwards, I didn't even have the money that I needed for a few things that I started doing. I mean, not that I didn't have, but I used to be so, so conservative with money and with how I spent my money and I used to save a lot. And given the chance, I still do save a good portion of whatever comes in. But because of this, because I had this scarcity mindset towards money, this mindset that said, 
oh, money is hard to get. Money is hard. And that was my mindset. And you need to change that mindset. And that's the thing about the fuck you money. It's more about the changes of mindset that you have once you have that pile of money. But you don't even need to have the money to start changing your mindset. You can change your mindset before. And it actually might be even better if you can change your mindset before you do whatever you want to do. Because it will be even easier to do it once you change that mindset. You change that spark. You say, no, actually doing things that I can be paid for and getting money, it's not that hard. I just need to bring value to other people and help them somehow. And money will be just a consequence. And by doing this, it will be much easier for you because you'll start seeing the value that you already have. You need to think that you are valuable already. So this is my take on the FIRE movement and why I decided to ditch it because now I have deeper purposes and I found things that I may do indefinitely and that I would do even for free. And if I can be paid for it better yet, but this is the thing about the fire movement. You, if you retire at Freddy at Freddy five, you still have a very long way to go and you'll eventually need to find something else that you do every day that gets you out of the bed because, okay, you might think, oh, I'm going to travel for indefinitely. But after a couple of months, it gets old. It, it really does. You start looking for something else because every day you're thinking, okay, now I'm in the city. Now I need to go see this, this and that. But it, eventually it gets old. You start thinking, okay, but now what? Now, will I do this? For the rest of my life, I, I can't see myself traveling for a whole year at a time without stopping and actually doing things like talking to clients or, you know, doing businessy kind of things. I can't see myself doing it. It's not for me. Maybe it is for some other people, but I think that most people, it's not for them, especially because to be someone that actually takes the fire movement seriously. And someone that actually does the things that you have to do. So you need to work your ass off for years on end so that you can stash up that cash. So to have that kind of mentality to be able to do that, you won't be able to simply stop cold turkey. Okay, you might, after so much time working your ass off, you might spend one year traveling. But now what? After that, okay, now you recharge your batteries. So what? And also, the thing is, you need to be able to enjoy your day-to-day -day life, your random Tuesday type of day, not only the highlights, because life's not about the highlights. Life's about the things that we do on a daily basis, on the day-to-day -day basis. And if your daily basis doesn't have anything that's memorable, anything that you actually like, you can't go to a park in your city and actually enjoy the streets and the miracle of creation all around you. If you can't enjoy spending some time with your loved ones on a daily basis, if you can't do all of those little things that are actually the most important things, you won't be happy just because you're on in a condo in Fifth Avenue. Of course, it's easier. Of course, if you don't have money problems, life's easier. Of course, you won't be hungry. You won't be thinking, oh my God, how will I pay the rent? How will I pay the bills, the energy, the whatever it is? Of course. But you will still need to find that meaning. You will still need to find something else that's greater than you so that you can do every day. And you need to be able to appreciate those small things as well. So that's why I dished the fire movement. That's why I think you should as well, if you're thinking of it. And I know we see the writing on the wall. We won't retire, at least not the way that people used to retire. And I think really that retirement is something that's very niche and it won't 
happen that much anymore in the future of society because of how the demographic pyramid works right now and how it tends to work in the future. So that's why it makes it even more important that we learn how to enjoy our daily lives and how to make purpose so that every day is worth it in its own way. Even the bad days, you will find something good. And that's it. Thank you for coming. Great things are fucking coming. Keep rocking, keep rolling. You are a rock star.